going on everybody this is Kazi welcome to another amazing video this time we're creating a look from dark this show from direction to storytelling to cinematography and then color grading top notch it's up there okay so so many of you have asked for this for months it's finally happening but this is just the beginning I'm gonna be doing so many looks from this show because it's just too good okay uh, Black Mirror is coming up. I'm going to do more looks from The Witcher, so get excited about that. So something that I want to switch up with this video and moving forward with look recreations, I want to create some sort of like a look rating system. And this look rating system is not going to be like, let's rate these amazing looks because they're all 10 out of 10. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into this. OK, so you're seeing it on the screen right now. So the first category is going to be versatility, zero being specific, which means it's very, very specific. It's only used for this one genre, one subject matter. And then the 10 is going to be general, like it can be used for a lot of different things. OK, second is going to be style and zero being Rec 709, base grade, throw on a look, move on. And then 10 being highly stylized. And then the final category is going to be longevity, which is basically how does it age over time and zero being current or trendy. It's very in like right now and then 10 being classic, like, you know, it's timeless. So super excited about that. Let's just jump in and rate this. So I would give this look six stars for versatility. I feel like it can be a pretty versatile look. And for style, I will give it about a seven. I feel like they got a pretty good you know, teal and salmon thing going on. So it is kind of pushed, but it's done in the right way. It doesn't stick out. It just feels like it's part of the environment, part of this vibe or the storytelling. And for longevity, I'll give it about a six. It's definitely above average. I feel like this type of look is not going anywhere anytime soon. And for those that want to level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go-to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look. How to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much, much more. Link is in the description. On that note, I need your help to blow my channel up smash that like button that's the fastest way to do that so i need your help smash that like button here subscribe to my channel if you haven't already follow me on instagram let's roll the intro all right let's get this show on the road i'm gonna go in here type in palette I'm going to drop in my color palette. This is very important when you're doing look recreations because this gets to tell you the story through color. So I'm going to move my scopes over for a second, make this bigger, and let's just study it for a second. So if we look at our highlights, look at the salmon tones in our highlights. There's barely any pure whites. There are very close to like an off-white color um, that we can see right here, around here, and right around here. Uh, right underneath our specular highlights. That's where you see that. But the skin tones are just so saturated and unapologetic compared to what the background is doing. Uh, there's a lot of desaturation going on in the background. And if you look at the majority of the background is made of this greenish gray that we can see right here. This color right here is what makes most of the image in the back. And then if you look at the darker areas, I'm talking about lower mids, you're going to find this teal. So this teal complements very nicely to this color right here, the salmon in the skin. Like if you see this to that teal that we see right here, it's a perfect complement. But if you study the deep points of this image, like the dark points of this image, those are pure black, like right here. So having a pure black point and then creating an insane look that this is in the middle you can sell it easily as long as your black points are holding up, which in this case they are. So that's very important to understand. So the thing that makes this look so unique is that focus on the highlights. It has this silverish quality to it. And it's also the effect or the process is called bleach bypass. But obviously they're not doing a heavy bleach bypass here, but it's enough to let you know that that's what's happening here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to create that effect. Some movies will take it really far, like think about 
Saving Private Ryan. And when I say really far, not in a bad way, I mean, they killed it, but that was the epitome of a bleach bypass effect. Uh, 300 used it as well, but they're using it in a very subtle way just to create a lot of separation and drama in our contrast, because then your blacks just go to nothing. And then your highlights have this really nice silverish feel. So that's what we're gonna be creating, okay? So this is what we're working with. Let me just play it through and see what's happening here. So one thing that I can tell right away is that the lighting is working in our favor. So that is a pretty good thing. I'm gonna park it on our hero frame, which is gonna be somewhere around here. And uh, so see, we got similar characteristics going on, but nothing else is alike. So we're gonna have to create that, okay? First node is gonna be my noise reduction. Second node is gonna be my balance, and let's just keep them tidy. I'm gonna move it right here. And then the next node is going to be my saturation. And uh, to create the bleach bypass effect, we're gonna be using layer mixer. So I'm gonna create that, put that right here, and call this node our look node. Then afterwards, we're gonna create a look adjustment. Let's just keep it here, start off, and then we'll build it as we move along. First thing I'm gonna do is right click here and change this to overlay. This is where the bleach bypass effect comes into play, okay? And you can see it. The highlights are already giving us the silverish look, okay? So that's the beauty of this effect. And we're gonna start getting in that world very quickly. So just watch. First of all, I'm gonna start off with my lift gamma gain. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see clearly. I'm gonna move this over and this is much better. So I'm gonna start with my gain, raise it up. Just don't be shy, raise it up, and then we're gonna pull it back. I'm gonna bring my scopes in so you guys can see what's going on. And now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna pull my gain down a little bit and start giving it some contrast to create this punch. Um, I wanna kinda create this kind of thing that we got going on here. So like really accentuate it, something like that. And now what I wanna do is just go under my log wheels and pull this down, you see right here? I wanna pull that down. Actually, you know what? I'm not gonna pull it down in this node. I'm gonna leave it as is. So let's just have that information for now. I'm gonna go under my third node, which is saturation, and let's go here, grab our saturation and crank it all the way to 100. Now we're seeing a lot of color separation. So if I do before, look at, right here, and if I do after, see the color separation, that's very important to have. All right, so in my look node, I'm gonna go under here. In my primaries bars, I'm gonna take my Luma mix and just turn it to zero so we can individually affect each channel that we wanna work on. So the first thing that I wanna do, let's start pumping in uh, this kind of magenta into our highlights. So the way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna go in my gain, I'm gonna take my greens, and I'm gonna start subtracting that. So see, we're adding that and obviously do too much and then come back to something like that, okay? Not there yet, that's totally fine. Now I'm gonna go into my lift and I wanna start adding this color into my lift and we're gonna do that by subtracting blue and just look what's happening, okay? So I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. Then I'm gonna go into my red channel and pull that down to start adding that cyan, but not too much something like that, then go back to my blue and pull it down. Right now, I'm just getting the look in the world. Like I'm not worried about anything else right now, okay? So something like that, I'm gonna go into my gain and I'm gonna take my magenta or green and pull it down again, subtract it. So see, now we're getting the skin tone sort of similar, not there at all. I mean, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. So again, do it too much and then pull it back, pull it back. So, if I do before and after here, if I kill this, like look at that, to this, okay? Already we're seeing something happening here, okay? So this is not bad at all. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna go into my look adjustment node and this is where we're gonna do our hue versus hue action. Try to do most of your things as, keep them as simple as possible unless you have to complicate it, okay? So let's just go here. I'm gonna start messing with my red first and see what's happening where I need this to be. So this here looks fine. Then I'm gonna take my yellow and see where that needs to be. So that needs to 
stay somewhere around here. I'm looking at this part of his skin and I'm looking at that part of her skin. So somewhere around here is not bad. Now I'm gonna go into my cyan, which is the background right here, and I'm just matching it to this, okay? So just watch. So how much do we wanna add that in? Something like that. And then a good thing to do is zoom out and kind of just look at it from this perspective and see if you've gone too far. See, like I feel like I've gone a bit too far, so now I'm gonna pull it back. See, so this is a pretty good view to kind of get a sense for it. And now if I do before and after, we really changed a lot in this node alone, okay? So this is all looking really good. Now I'm gonna put this node right here and then I'm gonna create a parallel node and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna split our highlights and shadows so we have better control. So I'm gonna go into my qualifier. I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna raise that up. And basically I'm gonna put this very close, like around two-ish. And then I'm gonna do shift H so you guys can see what we're doing. I'm gonna start raising it and I just wanna grab like such, just that. And just give it a little bit of denoise and that's good. And I'm gonna go right here, and I'm gonna do the opposite. So again, I'm gonna keep it somewhere around 2.1-ish, shift H, so we can see what's happening. Let's go back, and I just wanna grab something like that, and that's good. Okay, so let's go back into this view and see what we need to do. So a couple of things that we can see right here, our highlights are really hot compared to highlights right here, okay? So that's the first thing that we need to attack. So it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna go right here into my highlights and I'm gonna start pulling it back and I'm gonna go 100% and just look how much of a difference it made if I do before and after, just look at that. So all of it, it started giving so much three dimension to our image if you look at it, like look at the forehead right here to like what it's doing now. So it started pulling a lot of that sting out, okay? and majority of this shot should live in this area because our girl is not lit with an overhead light like he is. Our girl is lit through a window light, which we can see in her eyes. That's a very important distinction, okay? So you are going to be playing off of this right here, not necessarily that right there, okay? So I'm looking at this cheekbone to that cheekbone and it's doing it, okay? We're getting there. Now what I wanna do, is I wanna go into my gain and start pulling some of that magenta out and putting it into that warm tones that we got going on here, cheek to cheek. So I'm just gonna start going in with my gain and kinda start adding that warmth, okay? And now we're adding it. Because if I do before and after now and see how even the skin is, like how we're evening out the skin quite a bit. Like look at, even here, forehead, cheeks, so, I mean, that's making a pretty big difference, guys. Even like, look at the neck to right here. We're making a big difference here. So for now, I wanna leave that there. All right, so now for our blacks, I'm just gonna go into my log wheels. I'm gonna go under my shadow and just try to get this kind of crushed black thing going on in here. So I'm just gonna pull this over a little bit and then also get this color to match. So if I do before, see how it's kind of warm? And if I do after, we start to get these tones in, okay? And so as here, and even like over here, and I feel like that's closer to what we got going on over here, okay? So even if I do this one-to-one, -one, so this is before, and if I do that, look at this right here, to the black right there, before there was a little bit of warm tones happening on both sides, and now it's just there. It's just super, nitpicking like the tiniest detail. Yeah, one of those things that you don't have to do it. Like it's just not make it or break it at all, but it's just one thing that I wanna do. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it in. And uh, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna come right here and let's look at, is there anything else that we need to do to just really get everything singing? And I feel like, I feel like we've done it. I genuinely feel like if I pull back and look at these two shots, I think we've done it. I think we're there. A couple of things that we need to do, finishing touches, we have to add sharpening. 
because if I go here and look at the sharpening there to compare to our girl, we just need more sharpening. Focus on this eye right here, okay? I'm gonna go in here, blur radius, I'm gonna subtract my blur to add sharpening. Before, after, I'm gonna do it slower. Before, after, big difference, okay? So that gets us in this world right away, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna go under my noise reduction. In here, what I need you to do is, would. We don't have to do heavy lifting. It's a very clean image. So I'm just gonna uncheck this, break this chain. I'm gonna type in 6.8 so we can take out any gunky digital noise that we might have to make it look more like film. Then we're gonna come to our final node. And in here, I'm gonna type in grain. I'm gonna pull it in and I'm gonna do my signature 35 millimeter 400T. But I'm gonna get pretty close so you guys can see on YouTube the difference that we're making, okay? So this is before and after, you can't really tell much because nothing is applied, but then I'm just gonna start pushing it. I really wanna push it, okay? I wanna, I wanna give it a lot. Like bef before, after, I'm gonna do it again. Before, after, okay? And it just looks so gorgeous, okay? It looks so beautiful. So this is what we have. Let me just do a couple of things like that I quickly do to QC it. So from here, it's looking pretty good. Making it big, it's looking pretty good. And the last two things that I wanna do to just really, really get it one-to-one -one, um, is gonna be this, okay? I'm gonna create a global adjustment node right here. I'm gonna call it global adjustment. And uh, I wanna do this, okay? I feel like our image on the high end is kind of too saturated. So I'm gonna go under luminance versus sat, and I'm gonna take the brightest area and I'm gonna pull the saturation down, okay? So look what happens. Not too much, something like that. So if I do before and after, it's taking that sting out, okay? And it's leaving us with an image like that, which is looking pretty good and it just makes it look more cinematic, more film-like. Another thing that I wanna do is that you see how my image is a little bit lifted compared to like this right here, like it just goes to pure blackness. I wanna do the same exact thing and that's gonna be achieved by this. First of all, I'm gonna take my low range and I'm really gonna just bring it down to nothing. Let's keep it at one. We might even have to do it, like lower it even more. But I'm gonna take my shadow and I just kinda wanna crush it. So take it all the way down, it's fine. It looks like crap, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna go into my lower range and I wanna start bringing it down. So we only affect the darkest, darkest, darkest areas. So I'm gonna leave it somewhere around here. Like it just makes a big difference. I think that's the happy medium. I'm not going to take any further than that. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and just turn everything off so we can see it from start to finish. So let's put them next to each other. Started with our balance saturation look and then did the bleach bypass treatment by using our overlay in composite mode. And that already had put us in a very good place. And then uh, went ahead and did look adjustment and that's where the background color came in and started to dial in the skin. And uh, then did a split for our highlights and shadows. And uh, in the highlights, quite a bit got done, like we evened out the skin a lot. And uh, then we just brought some teal into our lower end and went into global adjustment and did the final adjustments to like really just hit the black levels where they needed to be and also pull some of the saturation out from the highlights and added saturation, added grain, and then noise reduction. And here's our final image. Let's check it out in full screen. When they say this is the golden age of television, I mean, come on, look at this stuff. I can genuinely do nothing else but TV looks for the next seven years and I won't run out of content. There's so much good stuff out there. Hopefully you guys got tons of juice from this one. Make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Do not forget to check out the link for the training in the description below. I will see you all in the next video.